Consider an arbitrary situation. There are three microservices in your system, one, two, and three, and there are some API requests which happens between these three. Now let's say microservice one requests to B, and then B sends back a response to A. B also sends a request to C, and C responds back to B. Whereas there is another microservice API call that happens from A to C. Now this needs to happen only after B gets the response. How will you manage this situation? Interesting, right? Let's try to see if there is a way to solve this problem. Hi, welcome to Design Strong. Today in this video, we will discuss about one topic which is very important for microservices, and that's event ordering. A few minutes later. Before we start event ordering, consider it with this example. You are in a room, and your friend is also in the same room. You call Domino's and order a pizza. Let's say this order you started at 10:30 and finished at 10:35. You're aware that Domino's is going to deliver the pizza within 30 minutes. Your friend also decided to order a cold drink for the same because you forgot to order the same along with your order. Now at this point of time, the friend decided that he is going to order the cold drink that they want only after 15 minutes. Before, because both of you are in the same room, it is possible for you to align on the time. But let's say what happens in case if both of you were in different houses. You ordered a pizza at 10.30. At that point in time, the time in the friend's house may or may not be same. You might have a different clock or even uh, let's say different time zone for that matter. So this 15 minutes cannot be same when you both are at different location or in simple way, in case if you both are following two different clocks. Similar situation happens in a distributed environment wherein we are working within microservices or different processes. So event ordering in microservices is a bit difficult. This is where Lambert has introduced a concept of happened before. Let's try to understand the happened before relation. So happened before relation can be understood in the same process A and B and A happens before B. In that case we can say that there is a happen before relation between A and B. Consider it this way. If there are two events A and B within the same process that happens at time T1 and two, T2 and because they are in the same process we are aware that T1 is less than T2 then we can say there is a happen before relation between A and B. The second rule is if in case there is a process P1 which sends a request to process P2. Now let's say event of sending this request from P1 is A and event of receipt of this API is P on P2 then we can say that A happened before P in all the cases. Why? Because a message or event cannot be received before it is sent. Third relation is a transitive relation introduced by Lambert which says that if A happens before B and B happens before C, then transitively we can say that A happened before C as well. Another rule by Lambert is event cannot happen before itself. So we cannot say A happened before A. The fifth rule and this is very important. If let's say there are two events A and B which cannot be associated with a happened before relation. In that case for a distributed system or microservices, we say that A and B happens concurrently. Now here A and B in actual may not be happening concurrently but because we cannot establish a happen before relations between them hence we say that we are not sure about the events and it will be better or it will be safe in design to assume that A and B happens concurrently. Next Lampert introduced the concept of logical clocks. So in order to understand logical clock, first of all we need to understand that we cannot have a single physical clock in microservices or a distributed environment. The concept of logical clocks is only to associate that we are trying to identify the order of events that happens between multiple processes. We are not actually interested in knowing the exact timestamps. And this relation can be associated even when both the processes have their own specific clocks that they are using. In order to understand logical clocks, assume it this way. 
each process P will have a clock C of P associated with that. Now, coming back to our example, in, if in the same process A happened before B, then we say that C of A, that means clock of A also has a time which happened before C of B. Agreed, right? Similarly, if let's say there are two processes A and B, A has a clock C and B has a clock D and A sends an event to B, that means we can say that for the event, clock C of E event will be happened before clock D of the same events received. And some more relations like if A and B happens on the same process then C of A will happen before C of D. If A is sending request to different process then C of A is again happened before C of D. And one important thing which of course is already clear with this concept is that clock of A cannot be greater than or less than clock of A because an event can happen only at the time that it happened. It cannot happen before it or even after it. So we'll see this clocks working with the example. I hope you found this information about event ordering in distributed system or micro services very interesting. In case if you did, do not forget to press the subscribe button, like the video and share it amongst your friends as well and say design strong. Cut them. Pow. Oh!